up. You're watching KMVT Channel 11 Twin Falls, the Magic Valley's news source. This is the news at 10 p.m. An accident at an intersection has left two people hospitalized in serious condition. Good evening, I'm Natalie Kindenhover. And I'm Ken Rickey. Thank you for joining us. About 6.30 this evening, emergency crews with extrication equipment were called out on Highway 93 at the freeway interchange north of Twin Falls. This Chevrolet was northbound on 93, apparently at a high rate of speed, when it hit a truck that was turning onto the freeway. State Police Corporal Bob Bingham says Brandy and Frederick Tews and their little boy were in the Chevrolet. Corporal Bingham says the child was saved by a car seat. His only injury, some marks made by the seat straps. His parents, though, had to be pried out of the car by rescue personnel. A nursing supervisor at the Regional Medical Center said they are both in stable condition. They were not wearing seat belts. The driver of the truck was not injured. A man accused of withholding information in a murder case pleaded innocent to six felony charges against him. Aidan or Tito Cantu is accused of being involved in the killing of 18-year-old Ryan Wiggins. The teenager shot to death near the Circle K on South Washington. Today, in a courtroom filled with Cantu's family, he was bound over to district court. Cantu faces two charges for being an accessory to murder and four charges of perjury. Investigators now think a shooting Friday night south of Castle Ford was probably a suicide, but they're not yet certain. That night, deputies dispatched on a family dispute call found Reuben James Garza dead in a field near his home. Sheriff's Lieutenant Bob Gothier says because the investigation isn't complete, they are not ready to confirm the 23-year-old man's death as a suicide. Assistant Coroner Merle Kelly says Garza died from a single gunshot wound to the chest. Twin Falls City will have to pay millions of dollars to keep up with future water demand. Tonight, City Council members got their first look at a water master plan. The report says the city will have to make costly changes to its water system to keep up with growth. Those changes could cost up to $34 million. The report was prepared by JUB Engineering. The city will continue to work with JUB until they can come up with a final plan. Twin Falls County foots the bill to maintain traffic court, even though it collects very little money from traffic tickets. Now the cities in the county will pay some of those costs. The amount to be based on the number of tickets their officers write. That means the city of Twin Falls will kick in about $60,000. Traffic court costs nearly a million dollars a year to operate. It's a place to start, and, and it's, uh, I'm not saying that we're going to ask for more next year, but uh, it, it'll help. It, it'll help. Uh, budgets are very, very tight this year, and, and any that we can receive um, will be helpful. The mayor of Twin Falls says the new expense could end up hurting taxpayers. I think there will be some limitations on some of the services that we provide. That's all we can do. Unfortunately, our only source of funds is, is through property tax. And um, it's not an appropriate way to levy taxes against the people in the community, in, in my opinion. The cities of Kimberly, Hanson, Buell, and Filer will contribute almost $10,000 under the new cost-sharing system. Idaho's largest electric utility says it will voluntarily slash its pending rate increase request by 40 percent. Idaho Power Company told the Public Utilities Commission that it was ready to adopt the commission staff's recommendation that rates be raised less than nine-tenths of a percent across the board. Idaho Power had originally asked for a one-and-a-half percent increase. If approved, the average customer would pay about six dollars more a year. The increase is meant to compensate the company for $40 million in improvements it made at its Twin Falls and Swan Falls generating facilities. Hundreds of low-income Utahns will be dining on a delicacy this year thanks to a donation from a food bank in Alaska. The Utah Food Bank got one of its largest donations ever today when trucks carrying 40,000 pounds of frozen salmon rolled into Salt Lake City. The Utah Food Bank says the majority of that donation will be canned and then distributed to low-income families. Timothy McVeigh's sister says the FBI used scare tactics to get her to talk about her brother's role in the Oklahoma City bombing. Jennifer McVeigh told Time magazine that FBI agents showed her pictures of burned, dead children. And she and her mother were put in a room with posters that had her name and possible charges against her written on them. McVeigh and Army buddies Terry Nichols and Michael Fortier have been indicted in the bombing. The Time article says Jennifer McVeigh has provided prosecutors with two typewritten statements about her brother's activities. President Clinton wants a committee to look into what's being called Gulf War Syndrome. 
Thousands of veterans from the Gulf War have reported mysterious afflictions and have been frustrated in getting financial and medical help. First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton opened the committee meeting today. She says the country relied on the soldiers when they were called upon to serve their country, and now they are relying on us. The Jenny Jones television talk show is being sued for $25 million over the death of a man who revealed during taping of the show he had a crush on another man. In March of this year, Scott Amadeur told the audience he had a crush on Jonathan Schmitz. Schmitz is now accused of killing Amadeur. He told police he is not a homosexual and was humiliated when the crush was revealed. An attorney for Amadeur's family says talk shows have been linked to attacks and suicides. Now he says the shows can be linked to at least one murder. Amadeur was killed before the show featuring the two men was scheduled for broadcast. It did not go on the air. Israeli warplanes blasted Palestinian guerrilla bases south of Beirut today. A Lebanese police spokesman says six fighter planes fired around 12 rockets in a series of raids on a hill near the Lebanese coast. In Jerusalem, an army spokesman says planes and helicopters raided terrorist targets north of Israel's self-declared security zone in southern Lebanon. The half-hour strike started several fires. Black plumes of smoke could be seen from Beirut 19 miles to the north. There were no immediate reports of casualties. The environmental group Greenpeace unfurled a banner in the heart of Beijing protesting China's nuclear testing. Plainclothes police tore the eight-foot banner from the hands of five activists who then tried to hold up smaller banners, which were also taken away. Organizers say the one-minute demonstration was the first ever staged by Greenpeace in China. A British historian claims to have found the Holy Grail. An Italian television crew was the first allowed to shoot pictures of what Dr. Graham Phillips believes is the sacred chalice. The vessel's historic significance dates back to the Last Supper and has since become the focus of fables and folklore, most notably the tales of King Arthur. One legend says historical researcher Thomas Wright hid the grail in Hawkstone Park in the first half of the 19th century. He supposedly wrote a poem containing the formula for finding the grail, 14 words related to King David, and 24 Roman numbers referring to the biblical verses. That formula supposedly led one searcher to find the grail. Phillips says the grail has since remained hidden in an attic. Hurricane Felix has passed by Bermuda and is tracking toward the American mainland. In the islands, near hurricane force winds smashed trees and caused general power outages. Police say high waves washed an oceanfront boardwalk into the sea. There's no word of any injuries. Along the North Carolina shore, though, rescuers have been pulling surfers out of the ocean and searching for bodies. At least three people have died since the weekend in rough water caused by the approaching hurricane. The body of a swimmer washed ashore today Another swimmer is missing. Well, that weather is changing very quickly, and here in the Magic Valley, we're in for a change of our own. Here's Jeffrey Pryor with a look back at today's local conditions. A little cool today, Ken and Natalie. We can see 83 for the high overnight low, 45 versus the normal of 90 and 51. Record high, 100 degrees, set back in 1929, and the record low, 36, set back in 1959. No moisture yet. That could change the latter part of the week. I'll have more on that in a minute. Some tips to avoid lawn mowing injuries coming up later in the newscast. And how likely is it nuclear waste stored in Idaho will ever be moved? The story after the break. Don't you buy no ugly truck. This is no ugly truck here, Granny. It's a brand new 1995 full-size half-ton pickup. How do you like this truck, Granny? Now that's what I call wheels. Yeah, that's right, Granny and friends. You can drive this truck home today. No money down, $219 a month. Tell them, Granny. If I was you, I'd jump on this deal like a duck on a June bug. Because you don't pay for expensive furniture showrooms at United Furniture Warehouse, our prices are a dramatic drop from the competitions. United Furniture Warehouse. With a little knowledge, you can turn any challenge into an opportunity. Nothing is impossible when you put your mind to it. Get ready to do astounding things. At school, it works wonders. Is the number 
one volume GMC dealer in Idaho. We outsell them because we sell for less and offer you the best selection. This 95 GMC one-ton dually has it all. 454 V8 leather interior was 29,889, now slashed to 27,669. We have the GMC you want at a lower price at Gary's Westland Motors. At Gary's Westland Motors, we outsell them because we underprice them. Because you don't pay for expensive furniture showrooms at United Furniture Warehouse, we can sell you fine furniture and mattresses at much lower prices. United Furniture Warehouse. level nuclear waste stored in Idaho is ever moved somewhere else, it most likely would be to underground storage in Nevada. How likely is that? As Charles Lemon explains, an independent review has found major problems in the Yucca Mountain Project northwest of Las Vegas. Politics and problems, not science, are at the heart of a proposed underground high-level nuclear waste repository in southern Nevada. That's the conclusion of a new government report, which cost nearly a million dollars. The $950,000 independent review, funded by the U.S. Department of Energy, was designed to examine management and financial aspects of the project, which so far has cost $1.7 billion, is still in the experimental stage, and is anything but certain to receive final government approval based on political considerations. A societal decision to to, to decide on geologic disposal is involved, and that cannot take politics out of that uh, out of that mixture. The new government finance study concludes there's little chance of the Yucca Mountain project staying on schedule because of a wide variety of problems. Even though the dump is supposed to be ready to take high-level nuclear waste from Idaho National Engineering Laboratory and other locations within 15 years. As far as the political situation. That, that happens whenever you, you get yourself involved into a controversial uh, undertaking like disposal of high-level nuclear waste or licensing a, a, uh, a nuclear power plant, for example. The authors of the new review say delays of five years or more at Yucca Mountain could push project costs from a 1990 government estimate of $25 billion to as high as $50 billion. To put that into perspective, that's enough money to keep the entire government of the state of Idaho afloat for nearly a quarter century. For KMBT, I'm Charles Lemon reporting. A change in your weather is in store for southern Idaho. Jeffrey Pryor has all the details coming up right after this break. three years, Dodge has offered a choice of more new nameplates than anybody else. Now Dodge offers some other choices that make driving the new technically sophisticated Dodge Stratus easy. During the Dodge Buyer's Choice Sale, get a new Stratus and choose $500 in cash savings. Or choose an interest rate as low as 1.9%. Or a Stratus lease rate of only $1.99 a month. The Dodge Buyer's Choice Sale. It makes visiting your friendly Dodge dealer a very smart choice indeed. Buying a house is a major undertaking. We certainly couldn't have done it on our own. First Federal took care of dealing with the house so we could just move in and actually concentrate on making it a home, right? That's right. Mike has his own taste. That wallpaper, it it's has beautiful. buffaloes, it has... But I got the cat. We're really scared of what we'd have to come up with, but they made it very easy for us. It's a big thing, a house. I think the only difficult decision was the wallpaper. The wallpaper. Uh, it's nice to have someone else who cares about what you care about. Meow. Excuse me, pardon the flashlight, but Blackers has cut their prices so low on these lane action recliners that we can't afford lights. We've slashed the prices on these motion sofas, love seats, and sectionals. 
You'll love the savings we're passing on to you with savings up to $100. This Lane Action Recliner is only $199. Grab your flashlight and come in to Blackers, where we simply sell for less. KMVT's weather brought to you by Pizza Hut. Mr. Sampras, you know why you're here, don't you? I'm too nice. We'll fix that. Let's see. You go up to the umpire. He said, you were wrong. You were wrong. You spotted a few balls, throw a few rackets. The ball was in. The ball was in. I'm incompetent. Yell at me. Say the motto. Play loud. And eat your pizza the wrong way. Crust first. Why didn't you say so? Stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut. With a zesty new sauce and cheese baked into a new thinner crust, you'll want to eat crust first. Two at once. I've created a monster. Large, just $9.99. KMVT News continues. Here's Jeffrey Pryor with weather. You ever have a bad hair day? Well, I'm having one today. It's all because I swam those 25 laps tonight, and here I am. Right, Ted? Am I right? Okay. Here we go. Weather. Clear skies, 68 degrees, dew points at 30. Very dry humidity out of 24%. Our pressure falling off at 29.93 inches of mercury winds from the south at 4. Lows this morning, generally in the 40s, the cold spot, Fairfield in 32, 36 at Sun Valley. The warm spot overnight, was there was a tie, Shoshone with 45, likewise here in the city of Twin Falls. Highs today in the 80s, 77 at Sun Valley, 87 the high, and that was at Hagerman. So we went up about 10 degrees over yesterday in most places. Still high pressure and firm control, nice weather patterns across much of the Pacific Northwest. We have this frontal system that'll be dropping down over the next day or so. As it does, we're going to see a few more clouds, also some cooler temperatures by tomorrow night, and a chance for rainfall on Thursday. The low with this is up in the Gulf of Alaska. Let's go to the satellite loop. We'll get a better angle on that. Here it is up here. Move over here. Low pressure center over here in the uh, Gulf of Alaska, accompanying cold front down in this area. It'll be dropping down over the Pacific Northwest. The jet stream will carry some of this cloudiness into Idaho by tomorrow night. The rest of the western U.S. today looked very nice, still very hot in the desert southwest, and some monsoonal moisture flowing up from old Mexico back into the Plain States, and that's going to continue for the next 24 hours. Let's go back to the map's jet stream. Here's the little bit of a dip, or I, what I would say a trough. Right along this jet stream current is going to be the frontal system tomorrow. It's going to uh, bisect the state almost in half here, so we'll be ready for that. What's happening across the nation? Well, you could say there's a ring of fire. That's what I would call it, all the way from the four corner states back into the central plains, up at the upper Midwest and lower Great Lakes, all the way around into the southeast. Now, you don't see any showers in this area, but still very hot conditions. Triple digits throughout much of North and South Carolina, back in through Georgia. Most of the rainfall in this monsoonal moisture that's flowing into the north. This is uh, the heavier activity now, Concordia, Kansas. Almost four inches of rainfall in the past six hours. Also some thunderstorms back in through Kansas, the Show Me State, and the Hawkeye State. Tomorrow, frontal system comes through, cool air mass in back of that, the high pressure starts to move out, and we're going to have to contend with that for maybe one day, Wednesday, and then Thursday, pow, some shower chances. Tonight, clear skies, temperatures upper 40s, east winds at 5 to 10. Tomorrow, increasing cloudiness as the day progresses, so it'll start up fair in the morning, then partly cloudy in the afternoon. Temperatures in the lower 90s, south winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow's probably going to be the warmest day of the week. Tomorrow night, cloudy skies, temperatures lower 50s. Those clouds will hold in the heat a little bit better tomorrow night. West winds at 5 to 15. In Sun Valley tomorrow, we're looking at temperature near 80 degrees and sunny. Your extended forecast, partly cloudy tomorrow, 90s, 80s on Wednesday, 70s on Thursday. The chance of showers, more partly cloudy skies Friday and Saturday, lows in the 50s. So watch those upper temperatures, so to speak, take a dip and then go back up. Finally, a little bit of rain in our forecast. Yeah, we're on the deficit side. We're, we're supposed to have four tenths. We've only had nothing. No. <laughs> we're at zero here yeah. for the month. And uh, we're halfway through, so we should, we should get a nice shower. One good downpour would cover the yeah. whole monthly total. Well, you better stay out of the rain if it's going to give you bad hair day. <laughs> <laughs> stay out of the pool, you mean. Oh, okay. The preferred haircut would, uh, <laughs> would do it for you.
Ooh, After it rains this week, your lawn, if not your hair, is going to grow even faster. <laughs> tips, to keep you, tips to keep you, your family, out of harm's way. Coming up. I'm sure the Paris to Dakar rally is a grueling race, but at least it starts in Paris. And it seemed like a good way to find out how tough our new Kia Sportage was. Over the course of the 16-day race, over a third of the field dropped out, but it seemed our Sportage could have gone on forever, unlike our drivers. And though we didn't come in first, we were the only one to come in under 14,500. Kia's special factory dealer incentives end August 31st. Just think, there may never be a universal language, but everyone knows there's a universal uniform for back to school. Denim, and right now at the Bon Marche, it's denim week with huge savings. Levi's 550 jeans only $19.99. Badge, Jordan, and Lee jeans are just $15.99. And denim dresses and separates are 25% off. All during denim week at the Bon Marche. So for not much money, you can get some really good looks. Okay, so maybe there is a universal language. Ford's factory authorized clearance is here. Need we say more? Yes, we do! Because when you're having the best deals of the year on the best-selling vehicles in America, it's worth talking about. Like low 3-9 financing or $600 cash back on Ford Escort. And that's on any model. Hey, it's Ford's factory authorized clearance. So don't just sit there, buy something. I'm Dr. Red Dig. Before you try to operate any kind of powered lawn equipment, read the manual. Tonight's Dr. Duke Health Report brought to you by the Magic Valley Regional Medical Center. He'll probably be tall. She'll be pretty. He'll be athletic. She'll be smart. And popular. And successful. I don't care what she is. As long as he's safe and healthy. While you are thinking about your baby, so are we. That's why we've made sure the Women and Infant Center is the best staff, best equipped internal obstetrics unit in the area. The Magic Valley Regional Medical Center. After all, doesn't your baby deserve the best? Modern lawnmowers, it says here, are quick and convenient, but they can also be dangerous. Tonight, Dr. Red Duke shares with you tips to make sure you don't get hurt. I've often thought that rather than mowing the lawn, it would be a lot more practical to get a nanny goat, let her eat the grass, and then milk her. I like goat's milk better than mowing anyway, but obviously most folks like to cut the grass. But speaking of being practical, modern power mowers have made grass cutting much less laborious than the old push type. But they also have a greater potential for inflicting injuries, such as throwing a piece of trash into a bystander. The blades of a power lawnmower uh, spin so fast that they fling objects out at over 200 miles per hour. So before you start mowing, spend a few minutes to clear the yard of all metal, glass, and sticks. It'll pay off in safety. But before you even crank the engine, be sure you've read the instruction manual and understand how to operate the mower properly. Next, be certain that the switch that stops the mower's engine when the operator is not present to activate it is working properly. Never bypass this switch. Also, be sure that the deflector shield and the mulching plate are securely attached. Heavy protective shoes and long pants, not sandals and shorts, should be worn when mowing, and never mow on slick, wet grass. However, one of the most important safety considerations doesn't involve the mower but the person mowing in the middle of the day. They don't think to stop and get a drink of water and that they're overheating and that that is something that is really important and can be as dangerous as anything we've talked about. But if you'll take my advice and get a goat, you won't have to worry about all these hazards. I'm Dr. Red Deer. Good news for Mariners fans. <laughs> he gets my goat. Jonathan Drew will tell you all about that and he'll have a whole lot more coming up in sports. Chef, you're driving an ugly truck, boy. I told him not to buy no ugly truck. Around here, it's against the law to drive an ugly truck. This is no ugly truck here, Sheriff. It's a brand new 95 half-ton 4x4, a short wheelbase unit, and you can drive it home today. No money down, two seventy-nine a month. Where you from, boy? Chicago. How come you got Illinois tanks? Don't get out, son. This truck's ugly enough. I like your outfit. Do from a pop. Have you thought it might be time to buy a new bedroom set, but you think you can't afford it right now? Think again, because with your Wilson-based Home Furnishings Express card, you can find what you want and take it home with easy payments to fit your budget. Apply for your Wilson-based Home Furnishings Express card, and you'll see just how easy it really is to furnish your home at Wilson-based. Potato farmers, 
Now you can save half the cost of building new storage facilities. Call on Shooty Potato Storage for a complete renovation of your existing sheds. Shooty will sandblast, repaint, or replace any rusted metal as needed, completely seal off damaging moisture from the building, and add up to R42 waterproof insulation for an energy efficient storage facility. All this at half the cost of a new building. Call Shooty Potato Storage Renovation today, 825 5044. Can't wait forever to run away with you. Time won't let me. Time won't let me. Time won't let me. Wait that long. KMVT News continues. Here's Jonathan Drew with sports. Good evening, everybody. Another former Idaho State football player has pleaded innocent to two counts of statutory rape. If convicted, Sam Carter faces a maximum penalty of life in prison on the felony charges involving two 14-year-old girls. The charges stem from the same incident involving Ike Johnson and Thomas Washington, two current players, and Derek Carter, another former player, who have already been arraigned and scheduled for trial in November. The Mankles are picked to finish fifth in the Big Sky football race. The team picked to be national champ, Boise State, opens practice tomorrow. The Idaho Vandals started yesterday. Preseason conference polls, and everybody thinks it's going to be a three-team race between Boise State, Montana, and the University of Idaho. As you take a look at the coaches poll, you will see that Boise State is picked by those involved in the coaching ranks, Montana second, Idaho third, then it's Northern Arizona and Ohio, uh, Idaho State. Meanwhile, on the media side of things, they think it's going to be the Grizzlies beating out the Broncos with the Vandals finishing third, and then the Jacks and the Bengals. So as you can see, it looks like it's going to be quite a race in the big sky, the final year for Boise State and Idaho. This is a big week and weekend in local golf. The IGA State Juniors Tournament tees off Wednesday. That's at Muni, Twin Falls Municipal Golf Course again, and that gets underway on Wednesday. And it runs through Thursday. Then Friday through Saturday at Blue Lakes, it's the State Match Play Golf Tournament. And down in the canyon on the other side of the river, it's the Canyon Springs Club Championship that runs Saturday and a Sunday. Meanwhile, the Ryder Cup team has been completed. Corey Pavin, Tom Lehman, Davis Love III, Lauren Roberts, Jay Haas, and Phil Mickelson, who are, were already in before the PGA started, along with Ben Crenshaw and Peter Jacobson. Brad Faxon and Jeff Maggart qualified after the PGA. And Fred Couples and Curtis Strange were added to the team today by team captain Lanny Watkins. The state sees softball tournament in Idaho Falls over the weekend. Hotze in the championship. They won their first five games, then got beat by Western Trophy. That's out of Boise. Blaine County took third. There are the scores again, 18-16 and 18-8 in the final game. Don't forget the door slammer tournament comes up the 26th and the 27th of this month. Major League Baseball, the uh, Boston Red Sox are red hot, having won 11 straight, doubling their lead over the Yankees, who were at Fenway trying to cut into that deficit. New York up 2 to nothing. bottom of the first. Mo Vaughn gets all of uh, that one, and it's 2-2. Two -two. Bottom of the fifth, 3-2 Boston. Tim Nehring, a three-run tater. It's 6-2 Red Sox. Next batter, Luis Alisea, going to be plunked by Scott Kamenecki. And he gets tossed. And the Red Sox roll over their 12th straight, 9-3. They lead by 10 at Ralph Cramden Yards in Baltimore. Indians and the Birds. The Indians up 5-4. Top of the fifth, or excuse me, bottom of the fifth. Bobby Bonilla, the single, the solo homer, I meant to say. We're tied at 5. Bottom of the sixth. Chris Hoyles puts the O's up 6-5. But the Indians work their late inning magic again, getting three in the ninth to win it. 9-6. to six. Again, it's the Indians over the Orioles and the Red Sox beating the Yankees. Again, they lead by 10 games in the American League East. To the West now. How do you blow a lead? First, you build one. 4 nothing. California over Chicago. Jim Edmonds, a two-run homer in the second. It's 6 nothing in favor of the Halos. Still in the second, Chili Davis with the solo home run. And it is a 7 to nothing lead in favor of California. But the Sox get even in the seventh. 
and they went extra innings before California wins 11-10. M's and Twinkies from the Humpty Dump. Ken Griffey Jr. is back with the team after breaking his wrist back in April. No word on if he'll play this week. Down one nothing. Joey Cora ties it with a solo homer in the third for Seattle. Top of the seventh, tied at two. The base is loaded. Mike Blowers, say goodbye. The Grand Salami, his second in 11 days. The M's cruise 6-2. to two. They are just a half game back of the Rangers for that all-important wild card position because it sure looks like it's going to be California, Cleveland, and Boston winning the divisions right now. Again, the Angels hang on to beat the White Sox in extra innings 11-10. to 10. The other games in the American League, looks like the A's are going to beat the Royals. They had a power outage that delayed that one. It's now 13-5 in the bottom of the ninth. And the Brewers beat the Tigers, as you see, 3-2. to two. Over in the National League, the Braves hosting the Marlins. The Fish were up 2-0. Bottom of the six, Ryan Klesko gets hold of one. And that'll tie the ball game at two. So we'll move on to the bottom of the eighth. And the Marlins again leading. It's 3-2 this time. One on for David Justice. And he, too, gets all of it. To deep center field, two run Tater and the Braves come from behind and win in their last at bat again the final 4-3. Rockies and Reds from Riverfront, bottom of the fifth, Hal Morris, the ground rule double, and it's 2-0 in favor of the Red Legs. The next batter, Ron Gant, had three RBIs tonight, two of them on this shot right there, and the Reds go up 4-0. That would be the final. Cincinnati shutting out Colorado again. There's that Atlanta and Florida score. Also, the Cubs and the Dodgers are tied at three there in the seventh inning. The other games in the National League, it's the Pirates and Padres tied at five in the eighth. This afternoon, the Giants beat the Cards and the Expos beat the Phillies. And finally tonight, in NFL preseason Monday night football. Well, yes, you can tell it is preseason. It was 35-7 at the half. Browns over the Bears, the final 55-13. Ralph Cramden Yards, let me guess. To the moon, Alice. <laughs> no? Actually, it's Camden Yards. Yes, I know. <laughs> a calling contest with a twist after the break. Imagine your next car. It will be beautiful. They call them hollering contests, a fairly common event, but at the Illinois State Fair, they did it with a different spin. This newest version of an old concept involves women supposedly calling for their spouses. <laughs> Contestants tried a variety of different methods to lure their mates, ranging from the odd to the really obscure. The winner of the contest was Vicki Tucker, who yelled and screamed like a chicken to her husband. We may have seen her a little earlier there. What was that pig doing in the morning? I have no idea. <laughs> they must have got a hog calling gun just mixed yeah, up there somewhere. I guess so. Well, I wonder what kind of call you use to reach your friendly neighborhood weatherman. How about hollering meteorologist? Here's Jeffrey. <laughs> tomorrow morning, we're looking at 50 degrees, fair skies, high tomorrow, 93, winds south and 10. Sweet. <laughs> Thanks for watching the news at 10. We'll see you again tomorrow night. This is KMVT, Channel 11. Twin Falls.